first part of this, Shura, is I want to get as much about list as possible because that will be printed in that list uh, issue. I don't know what I know about. But we'll see. We'll explore it. A place not very much of his opera tune scripture. Mm -hmm. Even Horowitz said he loves Rigoletto. Uh, I play I love it. Yeah. I play Rigoletto. He said he's added his own notes. Sure. Yes, I used to play it. I play Faust. You have a gorgeous, on, on Phillips, a gorgeous Rigoletto paraphrase. Yours. Did I? Yes. It's gorgeous. Oh, you, really, you really follow my records well. Oh, yeah. On Phillips, that's right. Your Mendelssohn? Mm -hmm. Oh. Which Mendelssohn? Prelude the and Fugue. Scare, the Prelude and Fugue in E minor is unbelievable. I, I don't know how you got colors you like that. You mean Nimbus. Nimbus. In the Nimbus. Yeah. But I also loved your performance of the Scherzo a Capriccio in F sharp major. Minor. I mean, F, F sharp minor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 What a piece. It's a gorgeous piece. You played it on the Irving, Washington Irving program. Beautiful piece. Mendelssohn is not. Okay. Are we ready, Vito? Yeah, I'm sorry, we've been rolling. Oh, I didn't know that. One of the great pianists of the modern age, Shura Tchaikovsky, is with me. He is a pianist that, well, there is really no way of describing the ravishing quality of his sound, the beauty of his conceptions, the spontaneity of his command of the instrument, and always there is that incredible craftsman, that man in love with the piano and making it shimmer and sing. The great pianist was just with another great pianist, Horowitz, and they were talking together about it must sing. And without this singing, we have just a percussive box. Am I not right, Mr. Tchaikovsky? Hmm. How are you? Well, I'm fine. I'm happy to be here. So good to see you. Um, is he off mic? Yeah. Okay. We've got to push this here. How's this now? A little nervous speaking. Pull it back a little more. <coughs> Nothing to be nervous. No, I just be nervous. Nothing to be I'll nervous. Ju I just be natural. You are always. Well, yeah. We're going to be talking about various subjects, and later on in the year, when you have more time, you're going to come back here, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk on some more. Sure. And I'll have some more questions written out for you. In fact, I may even send them to you. Mm -hmm. Now. Since we have this issue of Keynote that will be published uh, soon, I've been asking important pianists, first of all, what their opinion is of Liszt, it's his 100th anniversary, what works you've studied, and most of all, the impact of Liszt on piano playing. The first question I'd like to ask you is, wh when did you first come to Liszt in your own life? Well, at an, at an er very early age, of course, I couldn't play at the age of nine the big list pieces like the Sonata, but I always loved Liszt, and uh, I think it's a great shame that quite often Liszt is sort of looked down upon as being flush and brilliant. He's actually very deep music very perfect, touches the heart. It's, I love Liszt, and it's a mistake to think Liszt is just pure virtuoso music. Liszt was many things, yeah. and, and because he was so many things, he's been hard to categorize. So unfortunately, so many people still think, oh, Liszt, he's vulgar. He only writes these flashy Never, pieces. Never, no. I don't think there was a vulgar bone in his body. Do you? No, it's very beautiful, elegant, luscious, sensuous. What do you think is the first list piece that you heard? Do you have any recollection? The first list I've ever heard. <laughs> You're going to laugh. I think this leap is strong. Well, that's what And I love it. And that still melts many yeah, hearts. Yeah, yes. It's a beautiful piece if it's played well. Yeah. Not over sentimentally and not dry either. And you still play it in public? 
Uh, rarely, but I do. Oh, well, it Maybe has for a first anchor, because subconsciously I realize that everybody knows it. And they think, oh, well, it's different the way I play it. <laughs> well, and that's, th that's, of course, an important part of your piano playing, that everything you touch is different. I remember you played Russell of Spring at the Y. I love that piece. Yeah. yeah. Not, I know, because when I repeat that main theme, I do it pianissimo mm -hmm. to start with. Oh, it's it does in the spur of the moment. It's not really calculated. Now, in Liszt, do you think uh, that he's at his best if he's calculated or if it's spontaneous? I don't think it's calculated. He's, no, mm -hmm. I think it's... It's more spontaneous. Mm -hmm. it's, well, I won't call it spontaneous or calculated. It's natural. Mm -hmm. It flows. He understood everything about the piano, didn't he? Oh, yes. Do you remember what Joseph Hoffman said about it at all? About Liszt? Liszt. Did he have any good feelings about him? He loved Liszt. We didn't particularly speak about Liszt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you come to the Sonata, a work that you play oh, well, sublimely? Uh, well, that's quite a few years ago, before the war. Yeah. When you mm -hmm. when you looked at it, what was your first impression of this huge well, half a hour? Well, a great, great piece, great dramatic, dramatic piece, mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. like a symphony. Yes, it's yes. a marvelous work. Now, when you when you play Liszt. Do you think of orchestrating on the piano? Not the really. No, no. It probably comes out. There he is. There's the boy you. Yeah, there he is. He's the one who. Uh, yeah, that's right. Come in. Let him come in. Mm. This is so informal. See, mm. this will all be transcribed. It's very nice. Lovely. Roberto, this is the maestro that you got. You got him uh, here. I met you. I met you backstage the other day. Yeah, sit down. Sit down. Move a little back so you we don't. You were there uh, on Thursday or Saturday. I think Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Did you yeah. see the review today? I uh, know. I couldn't. I just. Crutchfield said that his playing may begin a revolution. I, I have well, he's part there. of the revolution, yeah. you see. Did you read the review today? Uh, no, I couldn't. It says starts like a leading pianist of, of the other. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's complimentary or not. I don't know the way he wrote. Well, if he no, said. he did. He he meant it complimentary. Yeah, and you know, he said that he's going to s begin a revolution, and you understand that, don't you? Of course. See, he doesn't and know maybe if that's... It's, uh, maybe it's supposed to be uncomplimentary. Oh, very, isn't it? Very complimentary. Com I could start a revolution. <laughs> You are unique. <laughs> you are kind of unique. There's no, no well, one I think that the review is rather unique. I, mean, I don't say it's good or bad, but it's quite different. I could start the revolution. Oh, we've had a lot of fun this morning already. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've we got along very well immediately. I like got. <laughs> so let's get back to list now. Yeah. When back you um, you saw this list sonata, well, how did you come to the piece? You remember? Well, I don't know. Uh, I was told by different pieces at that time uh, that it would be good to learn it, li like you learn anything exactly. else. And I thought, listen, that is a very important piece for a pianist. Now, did you, uh, do you have any recollections of when you first played it in public? The very first time I played frankly, I can't tell you exactly. Now, I think it was here in America when I was a student, but where I played the first time, I don't remember. And you've played it many times? Yes. Uh, Shura, tell me, uh, does it go over well with most audiences? Yes, it does with most audiences, yes. Even with its great length? Yes. Of course, when he played it, it sounds like five minutes. It goes so wonderfully. You don't even know it's a long work. Um, is there any special parts to it that um, pianists have to be very oh, careful I, of? I tell you now, suddenly I have to interrupt you. The first time I've ever heard it, you'd be surprised what I'm going to say, <laughs> Rachmanina with Carnegie Hall. I know that melody, and I didn't know the piece, and when he played that, of course, you know, the way he played it just haunted me. I mean, I, I went 
really, literally crazy. You were a young man. Him. Yeah. Well, you know, he was a was child, or well, I mean, you were a child, but yeah. well enough to know <laughs> when oh, Rachmaninoff played it. And then at Carnegie Hall, and I remember I was sitting up in the gallery. And I think that's really what started. That's why I started to learn it. Oh, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. That's wonderful that you were able to bring yeah, that the back. Rahmania, I've heard Rahmania play it. Now, and you just played never, it. I never forget it, the way I played it. It was quite different than people would play it nowadays. Do you know that Rachmaninoff said that the Liszt Sonata, the Appassionata, the Carnival, and the B-flat minor Chopin were the four most successful big works in his repertoire? I know the B-flat minor Sonata, the one with the funeral march. I, yeah. I heard his record several times. Yes, no, that's a famous... Mar marvelous, but quite different. I don't know if... Nowadays, people would play in that way, but it's that was absolutely marvelous. Absolutely. Uh, so the Liszt Sonata was um, really introduced to you then by one of the greatest performers that ever lived. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yes. What a wonderful experience. And that's what it was, yes. Now, do you get any special uh, audience reaction from the Liszt Sonata compared, let's say, to a Beethoven Sonata? Uh, reaction. Yeah. Do you feel well, that... it's quite different style of music. Sure. But do you feel mm. that the audience uh, is concentrating and understands the Lissonata as well as they would, let's say, the Appassionata? Well, it depends what kind of an audience mm -hmm. it is and probably in which country. Would you play the Lissonata mm. everywhere? Yes, I wouldn't hesitate. Good. I would even play it in the jungle of Africa. Why not? Good. Yeah, Good. I think they would like it. Yes, yes, it's a wild work. Is there any special uh, parts to the Sonata, Maestro, that you feel pianists are frightened of or that you yourself had? Yes, I'll tell you immediately, you know, when it starts in, uh, in the D major, that melody, I think most people are afraid to play it over sentimentally or mm -hmm. with feeling. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, it sounds. Oh, there's some great pianists, but it sounds a bit too strict. A little strict. All well, it depends who it is. Yeah. But I think one shouldn't be afraid of giving emotions. Do you remember when you first heard, let's say, the Horowitz recording of that in the '30s? Oh, absolutely fabulous. You know what I think of Horowitz is. Tell me again. Oh, it, he always was, you know, when I first heard, just a god, just a, like a, like a stamp of hypnosis. That's what I think of Horowitz. And now, too. He's a, like a magnet. Mm -hmm. I can't think. He's, it's just beyond piano playing. It's not piano playing anymore. It's something out of this world. And uh, I don't know if anyone else does that to me. Some singers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, of course, uh, is that what... Jesse Norman and, mm -hmm. and Dame Janet Baker, they do that to me. Yes, well, you love they, the voice. Oh, you love the voice. Yeah, okay, now, did you ever work on any of the transcendental etudes? No, yes, I did, but for some reason, I've never really played it. Uh, I think I did play one uh, F minor, you know. Mm -hmm. Somehow I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love everything. the rhapsodies. Mm -hmm. I love all, you know, all two, number five, six, and twelve. I play a lot. What are what are special things that could come to mind about Liszt technically um, for pianists? Do you approach him a little differently when you work on him technically, or how? No. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean, appro approach? I mean, is there any special mm. uh, thing you do with Liszt that you wouldn't do with um, Schubert in the well, way you of work? Of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, the way I work. No, well, of course, Liszt, you can play freely. Mm -hmm. Schubert, uh, not that freely. You can play with emotions, but you have to... So Liszt is not them. played freely enough right now. Well, it depends who it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of his later music? No. Do you know... No. Mm -hmm. 
which later? Oh, in his you know late years, he played that experimental. I, do. I don't think I do. No. Mm -hmm. Do you um, do you love most of the transcriptions? The Don Juan. Yes, I play. Well, sure the do. operas I played: Don Juan, Faust, Rigoletto. As far as opera goes, I think <laughs> that's all. And is there anything this. special about those compared to... They used to be said, oh, those horrible opera transcriptions, and yet now they're coming back into vogue. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad they are. Well, I'm you're glad. helping. I'm glad they are. Yeah. Um, is there... Um, oh, yes, I played Tannhäuser, of course. Wow, that's quite and a that's, bit. Uh, that's what... Uh, you know, Joseph Hoffman, that was one of his sure pieces. Was. And some people think it's a horrible arrangement. I think it's wonderful. It's unbelievable mm -hmm. that the piano can do that. Um, well, then you play quite a bit of it. You play Don Juan, you play mm -hmm. uh, Tannhäuser, Rigoletto paraphrase, the Faust paraphrase. As far as opera goes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's the hundredth birthday of Liszt. Yes. Where where is he placed in in your mind in the history of piano playing? Of all people, I'll bet you would have loved to have heard him play. Well, of course. It's a pity that at that, that time there weren't any records. Mm -hmm. Not even piano rolls. Nothing. At that time, yeah. Nothing. He is, what would you say, the... The greatest cavalier of the piano? Probably, mm -hmm. yes. I think that would be a very ap appropriate thing to say. He made the piano, mm -hmm. in a way, what it is today. He's like the father of the modern career. Yes, probably. Mm -hmm. Pianistically, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, anything else to say on list that comes to mind? No, I can't say anything particularly except that... Uh, I feel him very much. You feel him. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this, of course, is one of the most important parts of your own musical psyche. Feeling must come first. You're not big on just calculating. Feeling must come first. Yeah. Tell me, what was the... Um, heart, in other words, heart comes before the mind, but you have to calculate a bit. Not to not to get out of the frame. Of course, of course. The frame it's good, is. It's good to be emotional and expansive and even very spontaneous. But still, there must be a a frame. You can't get out of the frame because then you're liable to be in danger. But if you're within a frame, you can more or less free do as you like. Well, that's anyway. I don't calculate. I just feel it. And yeah. you must be so comfortable, though, on stage and so concentrated. Yeah, I feel that very you well. You know, even since childhood days, you know, I was a child prodigy, people used to invite me sometimes for dinners or play something. I could never play in a private house. I'm not the same. I, it, I felt tense. I, could n I, I think I was really born for the stage. I think the bigger the place, the bigger, the better I play. Well, I don't know that. There's some beautiful, fine, marvelous, even small concert halls, but I can never play in a private house well. I feel tender. It's psychological. I could never do it. And they say, well, you feel that way later on in years. You'll change your mind. I'll say never. And they also told me, you know, because I had a very difficult time in America. Oh, terrible during the war. Now, thank God, that's all over. And people say, you should teach, teach, run. I said, never. I'd rather do something else. He said, you'll change your mind when you get old. You would love to teach. I say, never. And the older I get, the, the stronger that feeling is that I would never teach. And I think you have, to be, you have to be born to teach. You have to love it. And I, I suppose that's my character. I'm, I'm unfortunately, or fortunately, rather, a very impatient person. If I want something, I want it right away, or if I have to wait, give it up. Mm -hmm. Except in piano playing, oh. because you can't learn a piece right away. You have to, and that I have abnormal patience, Fantastic. abnormal. And probably because of that, I mean, even impatient in life. 
And why not? That's the way I am. If people don't like it, like in French, say Tom P. <laughs> Tom P. <coughs> yeah. Incredible. Well, well, it's true what I'm telling you. You know, I, I think that that's a fantastic balance because for you, the most important mm. thing in the world is to have that abnormal patience yes. in the learning of your yeah, art. I do. I have an abnormal back. And uh, you see, I live in London, and um, I don't know, or even when I go to play concerts in the morning I try and I practice. I'm terribly, terribly embarrassed to practice. Because if anybody overhears my practicing, they would probably think I'm slightly insane or I cannot play, you know? I mean, so play. I don't think anybody, I don't know, but as far as, I don't think anyone practices the way I do. Tell me about it. I don't even, there is no method. It's something that I've learned myself. It's a, there I'm calculated. <laughs> something about slowly practicing to, to place the fingers not to overlap the note, even if it doesn't sound, even if the note next to me slightly goes down, I have to s start re-practicing. So I, and then when I have to practice different things, I practice such and such a piece and I leave it at such and such a place and I come back from that place. It's all, see, I could do it myself, but I could never sort of convey it to others. It probably wouldn't work on others. I think the most difficult thing in life, I don't mean any pianistic, even pray, to get to know your own self. And I think now I'm getting to know myself far more than I did before. So you're And I think it's uh, felt sort of in People feel it in yeah, your playing yeah, too, you know. Yeah, I think so. Because I'm more, I understand myself. And I don't believe in such a thing. I know a lot of people go to psychiatrists and all that. Well, I mean, it's all right for mentally retarded people. But I, well, I mean, I don't laugh at it, but it certainly wouldn't work for me. Because you did it, it yourself. Yeah, you went inside you yourself you on your own. You have to do it yourself. You can listen to friends and give advice, something good, but uh, you know yourself what's good or not. So you see it's your difficult, but finally, if you want it very, very much, you can overcome it and conquer it. And I think I've, I've accomplished quite a lot within myself, and that shows in playing. Well, you you were your own psychologist. That's right. Which uh, ultimately yeah. is the only possible yeah. way. You went inside, the inner journey was in you, and you are a man then that keeps growing, and one hears it in the playing all the time. Mm. And look at the journey you have taken from child prodigy who had to, so to speak, be under the influence of one of the biggest, biggest uh, um, temperaments of all time, Hoffman. Yeah. Oh, what was that like? Marvelous. He was good to you? Oh, yes. And Tell me a little well, about Well, you know, it. he wasn't the so-called real teacher. I mean, at Curtis Institute you know, in Philadelphia, they had two pianos, and I played, and he sort of sat down at the other piano and demonstrated. He didn't say copy, but he said, no, this, you, your uh, climax is too quick and things like that, and... And uh, I was the one who caught on it. And at my first um, period of studying with him, it was almost too much for me because I copied everything he said, all the inner voices, too much. Mm -hmm. And it would become more or less a puppet now, sort of. I, now I do it more in moderation, but his school is still with me. Sure, sure. But I don't exaggerate before I used to. In fact, you don't play with as many inner voices even as you did five, six years no, ago. No, that's right. Well, I'm glad you say that because I used to be criticized. Uh, well, that it was a little bit too much. Like, well, I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. You know, I play this one, the may repeat, now I'm going to come out with it. I thought it was very clever, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's really clever. It's all right at the time, but now I do it more in moderation. So that's another aspect of yeah. your growth, Mr. Tchaikovsky. Yeah, I think yes, so. Yes, yes. You decided and that. And I will never stop growing. There is no limit. No limit. And you know, you 
seem extremely strong. I am. On stage, this is mm. not a man of your age. This is a very powerful well, unit. I, well, I, t I tell you what. I mean, I don't know. It's not a secret. I don't know. I eat an awful lot of raw carrots and a lot of yogurt. If you have yogurt, I'll eat it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some. Okay, plain, not with fruit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him some. <laughs> I've had more fun with him. I, good for you to do that. You see, I said, I said on the last day of school, get me Cherkovsky, because I couldn't go to the concert. Get me that man. <laughs> and he did it. You know, I feel very. You know, it's not. I want to give you a compliment. <laughs> Maybe it's your personal. I don't know if you feel that relaxed. I could talk. You know, it's you. You do something. To, you know, I feel that easy. Sometimes I'm stiff. You see, He's Roberto, you he understand. doesn't understand how much joy he gives me. Is that's why you're here? Well, I can I can feel the vibrations. Yeah. That's why I talk. You know, I talk very. I don't know. Maybe I said some things I shouldn't. Oh, have perfectly said. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful interview. Wonderful. About row carrots. Oh, that's, I want to start it today. Now. You know, you know uh, Nimbus, for instance, when I uh, record, and uh, there's some people, I said, may I have, like, the, this is a room, can I have some more carrots? Hmm. Just a minute, Mr. Chikas, be right here with the oh, room. Oh, God. Uh, carrots. The only man in the <laughs> world, <laughs> the only man in the world that plays Shamanad. Who plays oh, Manazuka? Yeah, that's an incredible record. Man and Kaleidoscope. Yeah, Manazuka came once to South sure. France, and Shaminade is buried there. So yeah. she called herself the Shaminade of America. You know? What was yeah. the greatest performances you ever heard by Hoffman? Oh, sir. Schumann Kresseriana. Really? Also, when I didn't know him, also at Carnegie Hall, like Rachmanina mm -hmm. would list be man. When you're he on the play, then I didn't know. And there was someone, uh, I think a woman sitting next to me, and music, and then I didn't know. Oh, it was that was something memorable. You know? What What did you mean? The bad years during the war? There were a few concerts well, here. Uh, well, a few concerts and humiliation, no money to live on. Was that the I humiliation mean, uh, you mean? No well, money. I, I mean, uh, during the war, or you know, I had some, and I'm very glad I did have hard times. I'm glad, but that I conquered that. It's hard you know, for a lot of people. You know, the strain is too much, so they're gonna go down to the gutter. They start drinking and 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 go to the wrong company. Well, I mean, uh, all that is normal, but it's it's all right to conquer it. It's very and good to conquer I'm, it. Yeah. Well, even the Los Angeles Times I played, I think Chopin, Niemann, Concerti, was a very clever critic. I don't mean because he gave me a good writer, but he said, Shurichkowski, one of the few survivors. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. And to me, that was very flattering. Yeah. I understand that. Survivors. You love to travel, don't you? Oh, I do. Story. Even with the 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 horror of the I airports now and the well, planes, well, I certainly don't want to be hijacked. But I collect uh, timetables, especially well. I used to collect train timetables, but hardly anybody travels by train now. Yeah. So I know very. I could make you know when I go to a travel bureau, they are very suspicious. They think that I'm a spy, that I'm a <laughs> travel agent. Because oh. I sometimes I know more than they do. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I love traveling, and fortunately, I can. I mean, even not on my playing, I love to go to... Yeah, he wants to go to Albania just to see it. He's going to Australia today. When is it, tomorrow? To, uh, day after tomorrow. To Australia. Mm -hmm. And For a holiday. It doesn't bother you, the waiting? No, and the no, I love it. Tell me about I love this. to be at the airport and watch people come in and somebody sitting waiting for someone and and this one is worried about the luggage not being drawn. I love all, to me it's sensuous, highly exciting. And then sometimes I talk to people, where are you going and what? And, uh, <laughs> and then people come in and I see the signs, plane delayed and uh, I, <laughs> love, I love it. I love all that. So you and see the drama, got, the human, and the human. I'd, and once at the Athens airport, uh, there was an American waiting for somebody. He got to talk to me, and he said, uh, 
he just said, well, this is a funny answer. And he said, what kind of work do you do? So generally I lie because I don't want to start talking about music, you know, because, you know, people say music. I said, well, I'm a pianist. I have my brother. I used to play piano. So I said, well, uh, yes, I, I said, yes, I'm a pianist. What kind of piano, what kind of music? Pian classical pianist, concert pianist. So he looked at me. <laughs> If you're a concert pianist and I'm an astronaut, <laughs> <laughs> then he's an he astronaut. Didn't believe me later on the exchange course. <laughs> oh, sure, it's quite wondrous. <laughs> uh, but you were saying that you're impatient. Obviously, at the airports, mm. you're very patient, though. Yes, that I am. Well, unless I have to go and catch a concert. Yeah. I mean, God, I mean once uh, something terrible happened, I flew from... I had to fly from Copenhagen to Czechoslovakia, not to Prague, well, through Prague to another. And, and then I waited for the, the plane with little delay to go, and I fell asleep and missed the plane. So they had to book me through Frankfurt, and, and then I got to Prague, and uh, also the plane was there. So I, I got to the concert literally with my... Uh, and the excitement of something different, I played marvelously. And I remember I played Bach Partite in E minor. I don't Ooh, know. Oh, what a work! I played it, and people say, "How can you play with all that excitement?" And that helped me. Mm. I like something abnormal like that happening. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you're a man that lives yeah. on adventure. Yes. There's even still in, people like you. Even in piano playing. There's yes. Yeah. There's nothing more adventurous than piano yeah. playing. That's life yeah. at its most yeah. intense, isn't it? Yeah, that's intense out there. That's yes, living well, in the one, moment. Uh, one critic in London, he always gives me in Financial Times. He said, "Going to Tchaikovsky's recital is like going to an adventure. Adventure. He doesn't even call a sort of a psychological adventure." And I think that's very flattering. Oh, of course, of course. Whether it's good or bad, but it's flattering. It's wonderful. <laughs> mm. We take a break for about 10 minutes. It's only take about 10 minutes and you come back. Uh, I see. Okay. That's good. Um, it's not going to be in the, uh, We're going to edit it. Uh, it's good. Perfect. How's his voice level? Fine. Good, good. When is it going to be um, in the air? Probably not till March. Well, that's all right. Yeah. I'll get you a copy. Yeah. I'd love to. When I come to London. Yeah, wait, wait me, you can get me a cassette. Yeah. I'll get you a cassette. Yeah. It's going to be, which station is it? WNCN. Yeah,